Breaking news, Manchester City are not perfect. Yes, just like any other team in the league, they can be got at. In the 1-1 draw against Chelsea at the Etihad, I think we saw a perfect example of when the team has some top quality players and they execute a game plan to perfection, that you can get at this Man City side. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think they need open heart surgery. I just think with a couple of tweaks, they'd be even harder to play against. Can you imagine that? But Mev, what on earth are you on about? Well, let me get into it. And the first one being, they're too easy to counter. You know when you watch a game of football involving Manchester City that they're going to dominate a large proportion of the ball and retain possession for the majority of the game. And even when they don't have possession of the ball, they're going to be really effective at trying to win the ball back and pressing you high. So your best opportunity of scoring is by counter-attacking them quickly and effectively and making sure that you, when you get an opportunity, you make sure you take it because you might not get too many of them. And that's exactly what Chelsea did. And in fact, I think the Pochettino did something incredibly clever and actually exposed how easy it was to counter-attack Manchester City. In fact, we saw warning counter-attack from Nicholas Jackson and he if it wasn't for the fact that he had a bad touch he could have gone on and scored but then of course they did capitalize Chelsea and they scored through Raheem Sterling and I think it was far too easy and something that Man City could have avoided but what did Pochettino see that no one else did this is how Chelsea set up when they had the ball with Petrovic in goal. And you can see here, Man City are in a very good position here. Chelsea, the only place they can pass the ball is to either centre-backs. But what Pep Guardiola did is he wanted his wingers to actually press the centre-backs and be incredibly aggressive. Which I thought was a bit surprising because they did that in that 4 all draw back at Sanford Bridge earlier in the season. And they got punished for it. And unfortunately, for Man City's sake, he didn't learn. So what happened here is, is you got Phil Foden pressing Levi Colwell. And then you've got Jeremy Dogu pressing Axel de Sassi. And what Petrovic does is, he passes the ball to the extremely aggressive Malagusto right there. And then what happens then is, Doki then has to track back and he's unable to do it because he's so far away from where Gusto is. What then happens is, uh, you had Alvarez who's playing in the left side at eight position. He then comes out to try and fill in the space that Gusto is running into. But Cole Palmer also drops deep. And then against Nathan Ake, who is a, normally a very good defender, that the two on one, he just finds it incredibly hard to defend against, as most defenders would. And then what happens is Cole Palmer and Malagusto on the side against the two. And at Julian Alvarez, this is not his natural position. So defensively, he's not as good as, say, for example, a Bernardo Silva. And he doesn't know the right time and place to get involved in the play, which leaves Nathan Ake extremely isolated, which then leads to a massive space in the back for Manchester City. And if I draw it for you here, this entire space here is just free completely. And then what happens is that Nicholas Jackson then decides, okay, I'm going to fill in that space there. And then he drags Ruben Diaz all the way out there. Manuel Kanji isn't actually in this position. He's actually playing in midfield. And with the running power of Conor Gallagher up against the likes of Rodri, Gallagher is always going to get better than no matter what. And then Carl Walker is so focused on Raheem Sterling because he knows that the pace that he has is so crucial and pivotal to the way that uh, Chelsea are going to attack and score if they do, that he's got to stay close to Sterling, which leaves all the space for Nicola Jackson to expose. And then it means that the likes of Conor Gallagher can also run in there in that space. And that's how Chelsea broke through the press incredibly easy. And I actually think Pochettino saw this first when Everton played Manchester City in a, very, uh, in a couple of weeks ago. And I think Dominic Calvert-Lewin actually had a, did a real number on Ruben Diaz in that game. Obviously, they didn't end up scoring, but the threat was there. And I think Pochettino definitely saw that because this 2 e one versus Nathan Ake, it was too easy every time. And Junior Alvarez was always either further up and, too exp and leaving the space which leaving Nathan Ake too exposed, or he wasn't competent enough in defending and tackling in that area. And I think... When Man City dominate the ball, it is far too easy for Chelsea to counter-attack. And Pep Guardiola knows this. He knows that Man uh, Chelsea are going to look to try and counter-attack uh, on them. They did it very well at Sanford Bridge. And the fact that he didn't learn from the first game is incredibly worrying. And now the second way that Man City were too easy to come up against by the Chelsea side was the fact that when in position, they were unable to break Chelsea down. Normally City set up, as we know the season, in the 3-2-4-1, and normally one of the defenders inverts into the midfield to play alongside Rodri. In this case, it happened to be Manuel Kanji, normally it's like John Stones, maybe sometimes Josco Gavardio, unfortunately, uh, Gavardio was out injured and John Tonelli just returned back from injury, which meant that it happened to be a Kanji. And I think in this game, he was arguably the wrong player, and I think Chelsea targeted him for it. Because when they're in position like they are now, you've got, for example, Nathan Ake with the ball. You could have Carl Walker with the ball. It could be Ruben Diaz, whichever one, but we'll go with Nathan Ake. Conor Gallagher, his first thought is to mark Rodri. And so he is on Rodri like a rash, making him unable to pass to Rodri. So, therefore, the only person he can pass to is either to go all the way back to Edison. But, as we know, as Pep Guardiola wants the side to play, they want to be going forward, attacking and progressive. 
But what Chelsea did was they intentionally left Manuel Kanji free. And so there's a very easy pass for a player of Ake's quality to make to a Kanji. But what happens here is the fact that as soon as this ball is starting to travel towards a Kanji, you've got Enzo Fernandez charging at a Kanji. And so he thinks to himself, there's nowhere I can pass this ball apart from Carl Walker. And that's what happens initially. But as you see later in the game, Ake has the ball again, we'll move, we'll move Fernandez back to where he was. And what happens is Cole Palmer all of a sudden become, oh, let me move these two across, Cole Palmer becomes incredibly aggressive on Nathan Ake, Raheem Sterling becomes incredibly aggressive on Carl Walker, and then everyone pushes up a little bit, and then now Ake, the only free man for him to pass to is Akanji, and what happens is Fernandez again charges at him, but now there is nowhere for him to go because Akanji is unable to turn with his back to goal. So what that means is he's unable to make a pass to De Bruyne, to Alvarez, to Haaland, anyone for the forward. And now with the wingers charging down the wider centre-backs, it means that Akanji can only go back to Ake, but even then he's passing to Anake who's under pressure by Goku Palmer, and Anake has to pass back to Edison. And when this happened a couple of times, and it made it really, really hard for Man City to break down the Chelsea side, and it meant that Chelsea were pressing a lot further forward than they were able to. And what ended up happening was Edison just ended up hoofing it along to Haaland, and then one of our Alvarez De Bruyne ended up picking up the ball, but it became percentage football, which is not at all what Pep Guardiola likes. Now, this brings on to my second point, because if this was someone else, like I said earlier, maybe like the likes of John Stones, then it might have been something different. But this brings on to the second point, which is the personnel. Now we all know Man City have world class talent not only in the starting 11 but on the bench and in the reserves as well. So don't get me wrong when I say that I think the personnel were a bit of an issue because I think Pep Guardiola in this game played the wrong players and not only that I think the players that did play were in the wrong positions and I think even Man City and even Pep Guardiola can sometimes get it wrong and sometimes he can play players who are out of form. Who am I talking about? Well. Like I just mentioned with Manuel Kanji, he was unable to turn in that midfield and not able to find the space and his play and his teammates for the forward, which meant that Man City, any time the ball went to him, he had to pass it back, and which meant that they were unable to progress and Chelsea were able to press him further and further forward. If that was the likes of John Stones, then he could have made a difference. Now, John Stones is only just come back from injury and he played midweek in the Champions League. So... Is this potentially an issue with Pep Guardiola? Could he have maybe rushed to Johnson in that game, played a Kanji in that game instead in his place? Because this was the game that really mattered because the Chelsea side were capable of getting a point against Man City early on in the season. So they were more than capable of doing it again. And they won the last two. So maybe they could have done... So maybe Pep Guardiola could have played Johnson. Who else am I talking about? I'm also talking about Jeremy Doku. And I love Jeremy Doku. And I think he's a very exciting and fantastic player. But I think he had his best game of the season against Bournemouth. And I think that game, he got one goal and three assists. He was absolutely phenomenal. Bournemouth could not contain him. But ever since his injury, he has been struggling a little bit. And when you think about it, the amount of times that Doku was able to get the ball and run into space. But Chelsea were letting him do that because they weren't too worried about his final product. Now, I'm not having a go with Doku. He's still 21 years of age. He's so young. He's so exciting. He's still so raw. And he's going to be a fantastic player in the future. But at the moment, he's not in form. So maybe you don't play him. Obviously, the big one would be Jack Grealish, but obviously, again, he got injured again. So now we're building an idea of Man City. Maybe they have a couple of injury issues. And I know they won't get much sympathy for it because of the amount of money they spend on these players because they're so amazing. Uh, for every other team, injuries is an issue. But for Man City, I think it has to be as well. You've got to take it into account. I think the other one is Phil Foden and Julian Alvarez. Both are both fantastic players. But Pep Guardiola deciding not to play Jul uh, Phil Foden in midfield, I think, was a mistake. And not only that, but I think is persistence with Julian Alvarez in midfield is an issue now don't get me wrong again this is nitpicking this is early the minuscule details which only matter against teams who can really hurt Man City against 15 of the other 19 teams in the Premier League you don't even notice these issues Man City win the game comfortably and even in the Champions League against most teams Man City win comfortably but I think in some games it has been seen that Julian Alvarez is not a midfielder. He can play as a second striker to our Holland when teams are defending really deep and they don't have the quality on the counter to be able to hurt Man City. But when you have the ball, Julian Alvarez and Manuel Kanji in midfield are very are players who like to play forward and they will not play possession-based football. They will not likely be able to hold the ball for a long period of time. They want to make that forward pass. They want to make the attacker move and they're not willing to slow the game down like for the examples of Phil Foden or Bernardo Silva. And Bernardo Silva is another one 
obviously, yes, he did pick up a bit of a knock in Champions League midweek. So there's a big asterisk on everything I'm saying here, and understandably so, and I don't mind that. But they're really playing Copenhagen in midweek, and I think despite the fact that they were away from home, I respect Pep Guardiola for giving them the respect they deserve, even though they're in the last 16 of Champions League. But I think it's one where Bernardo Silva could have been starting in midfield. I think we saw in the second half Pep Guardiola make this change. He brought on Bernardo Silva for Julian Alvarez. And when you're chasing a game, it's not often that you bring on a midfielder for an attacking player. But he did that and Man City looked a lot better side forward. He was much better retaining the ball, much better passing the ball in between the lines of Chelsea's defence. And I think it went to show. But not only that, I think Akanji then dropped deeper in, into that back line and not in midfield as much. And that pushed Kyle Walker much further forward, which then ended up leaving the whole Chelsea back line, the back four of Chelsea, being so stretched out. Pochettino had to make a change and he had to bring on another centre-back because Man City's back line was so stretched. And I think that goes to show that Man City have quality players, undoubtedly. But even on some occasions, they can be out of form and you might need to rotate them. But unfortunately, Pep Guardiola doesn't want to do that. He wants to play Alvarez every time. He wants to play Doku every time. Who would you bring in with the injuries? Maybe give Oscar Bob a chance. We haven't seen him since the Newcastle game. He had a fantastic finish to get all three points for Man City against Newcastle. Have we seen him since? Has he started since? He definitely hasn't started. He might have come on for a couple of minutes, but he definitely hasn't started. I think it's another one where... I think Pep Guardiola got his personnel wrong and he played them in the wrong positions in this game as well. And thirdly, I think it is individual errors because as we saw in this game, I think two players in particular, Carl Walker and Erling Haaland made some big mistakes in this game. Erling Haaland, let's not be too critical of him because of course of the fact that, you know, he missed three big chances in the game. He had an XG of 1.98. He should have scored a goal. We know he probably on another day will score those goals. Let's not be too critical of him. But I think a player we do need to be a little bit critical of is Kyle Walker. I think he's been phenomenal for City for a long period of time. But I think just recently, he has made some questionable decisions. And I do think to myself, who's the weakest defender in that back line? And I think it is Kyle Walker. If I'm being completely honest, if I've got that wrong, then let me know. But I do think it's Kyle Walker. And I think the first goal completely epitomizes it perfectly because he makes two mistakes. He recovers from his first, but then it's the second one which kills him in the end. So here's the first one that I talked about. And here you can see Chelsea on the counter-attack down Man City's left side. Like I said earlier, I think they're too easy to counter-attack. But I think they're in a very good position here to be able to defend that counter-attack. Manuel Kennedy is running back from that midfield position which he was adopting. And Kyle Walker clearly has Raheem Sterling. But I think what happens here is that Kyle Walker makes an incredible lapse of judgment yeah, I know he's quick. I know he thinks he's quick. But to be able to think he's able to catch up with the Chelsea attack there, I think is a massive, massive mistake. And maybe an overconfidence in his abilities, but also a complete lapse of judgment. And as you can see here, he starts running towards Nicholas Jackson. But as you can see, he's pointing towards Manuel Kanji to say, you go get him. And then he's looking at Raheem Sterling like, oh my God, what a mistake I've made. Raheem Sterling is clear on goal. And he knows he's clear on goal. He's He's played against uh, Raheem Sterling. He's also played with him for Man City and for England. And he knows the pace that Raheem Sterling has. And he's left him completely open there. And all Nicholas Jackson has to do is find a perfect ball to him. And he does. But despite his mistake and the fact that he left Raheem Sterling completely free, he's able to recover. And I've decided to uh, have the still of it pausing here. Because here... Carl Walker, all he needs to do is put on the brakes and just let Sterling take a shot with his left foot because he's closing down the angle for him and you've also got Edison there making himself very big and imposed. So Raheem Sterling is probably, you know, the XG of that chance is going to be very, very low. But Carl Walker, like I said, has played with him for Man City, played with him for England. So he knows that what Raheem Sterling really wants to do more than anything else is cut inside on his right foot and take a shot. But the fact that he allows Sterling to do that and then obviously Raheem Sterling goes on to then score the goal I think was a massive, massive mistake because I think he's trying to overcompensate for the first mistake he made which is letting Raheem Sterling free but then he made up for it by getting there but then he makes another mistake because he's so keen to make up for the first mistake they end up making the second mistake of letting Raheem Sterling cut inside on his right foot. Is there enough mistakes for you there? <laughs> Hope you can catch up with all those. And there we have it. And just to summarise, Man City are too easy to play against on the counter-attack. They play the wrong personnel in the wrong position sometimes too often despite Pep Guardiola knowing that he should probably play other players. And thirdly, individual mistakes. And the combination of all three resulted in Chelsea getting a point against Man City. Now, if you've been watching this video and you think to yourself, I'm absolutely waffling, then let me know. However, for Man City fans, if you're maybe thinking to yourself, this is a complete over-exaggeration, I don't think so, but I can see what you're saying. Because at the end of the day, Man City still got a point, and Erling Haaland still should have scored a goal in this game. So Man City easily could have won it. But I think it's the shoots of a style of a way of playing against Man City which can lead to some success. I'm not saying this is the answer, but I do think Pep Guardiola has some small problems. And like I said, just to summarize, 
I think against most teams in the Premier League, Man City would be fine. Against 15 of the other 19 teams, Man City would be absolutely fine. And even in the Champions League, if they carry on playing like that and they leave themselves a little bit too exposed at times and make these small mistakes, it could lead to a draw here, maybe a potential loss later on. And when you're coming up against Liverpool and Arsenal, you can be damn sure that one of them is probably going to capitalise and will gladly take it up on that opportunity.